In today's Lifestyle News, we will hear from Treasurer Connor Shea of the Little Theater's Alice in Wonderland production, and Zakia Gale, who got the inside scoop on this weekend's Java Jam. We will also be joined by our very own Canisius Connection producer, Rachel Hirschbach. Stay tuned, this is Canisius Connection. Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in to Canisius Connection, your number one source for lifestyle events happening here at Canisius. I'm Julia Cementilli. Joining me now is Rachel Fershbach, who is back at Canisius from studying abroad in Florence, Italy. She is serving as producer of our lifestyle show, Canisius Connection. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Julia. So tell us, how did you first get involved with um, Griffin TV? Um, I got involved with Griffin TV my sophomore year um, here at Canisius. Um, my friend David and my other friend Gabby were um, co-producing the show, and so that I, through Gabby and um, David, I got involved. Um, by just doing video packages mm -hmm. and um, anchoring. So. Awesome. And why lifestyle as opposed to like hard news or anything like that? Um, I don't really know why. I guess it's just I stray more towards lifestyle than mm -hmm. I do for hard In news. Your personal life, yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, it's just what attracts me and I'm good at it. So. <laughs> right. And what experience do you have with journalism in general, like outside of school and outside of Canisius? Um, ironically, I actually work for a newspaper outside nice. of um, Canisius. Uh, I started an internship my the summer before my junior semester um, at Canisius, and I've been working. Uh, they hired me on as a freelance reporter, mm -hmm. and I've been working there ever since. Oh, um, nice! And so you like it? You think you'll stay there? Um, for now, yeah, yeah I think I'll stay there. Um, but I do want to branch out. I also want to get back into, obviously, broadcasting. So I'm thinking about doing an internship with that. And through studying abroad, did you learn a lot about broadcasting and journalism? Or was it more other kind of other um, stuff? Well, I, studying abroad, because I went to Italy, so mm -hmm. I did more, like, art, mm -hmm. the, culture. Artistic stuff, Sort yeah. of thing. So um, I didn't really do, I had about five months off from journalism, ex yeah. aside from the part where I did opinion and opinion pieces of the different places that I study, I mean not study, yeah. but traveled to, and I wrote those ah. for the paper I work at. So. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, and now we are going to take a quick commercial break. So don't go too far, though, because next we will be hearing from our own Julia Cimentelli about the Alice in Wonderland production. Welcome back. Little Theatre has been rehearsing for their upcoming performance of Alice in Wonderland, which is to be performed this October. I got the chance to sit down with director Connor Shea to get more information about the production. Let's take a look. 
Hi, this is Julia Sabatelli from Griffin TV, reporting live from the Little Theater office with Connor Schick. How are you today, Connor? I'm good. How are you, Julia? I'm doing good. I have a few questions about Alice in Wonderland. Fire away. So, first, tell us a little bit about Alice in Wonderland. Um, is the Canisius pr production going to be like the original, or will you guys make it your own? Well, it really depends on what you mean by original, because okay. I know that a lot of people, when they think Alice in Wonderland, they think either the Disney version or the Tim Burton version. Yeah, okay. Um, it's pretty much... A lot like the books, um, oh, okay. but it's a combination of Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. Oh, okay. So it's going to combine a lot of scenes from both of them. Depends on how the director Albert Falcone, for the record, um, <laughs> what he wants to do with it. Okay. But it's going to try and stay as true to them as possible. But there will be a few Disney influences and Tim Burton. Um, influences here and there just okay. so a more general audience can understand it. Okay, good. All right. Um, so as a club, what are you guys hoping to accomplish this year? Um, this year, we hope to recruit a lot more people because the class that just left, the class of 2014, um, they took a lot of very good people with them and hopefully we will be getting some new talent somewhere along the lines. It doesn't have to be a freshman, it could be anybody for that matter. Mm -hmm. Um, and we also hope to enhance whatever talent that we have in terms of our current members and even our prod staff. Okay, good. Uh, so when's the production of Alice and how can we get tickets? The production of Alice will be the first weekend of October, which I believe is the 2nd, the 3rd, and the 4th. Um, we will be having shows starting at 8 o'clock, doors open at 7 and on Saturday the 4th we will be having a matinee as well um, doors at 1.30 show starts at 2 and you can call the Little Theater office for ticket reservations or you could just email um, you can email us at cclt at mykinesis.edu Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and how and why should students here get involved with Little Theater? What's like the best part of it? Well, first off, it's a club to join. Um, yeah. Second off, it's it's a lot of fun. It's very, it's a lot of hard work, at least from what I've experienced. Because last year I was in I was in every show. I was oh, in okay. um, I was in Harvey Midsummer, at all, the works, mm -hmm. and for me. It's one of the most rewarding experiences to have something as simple as a script and make it come to life. And I'm pretty sure that anyone can say that watching something is completely different than actually being in it. Like, I'm sure that everyone has their inner actor that they want to unleash at some point or another. So, I al I've always considered that Little Theater is the best place to <laughs> unleash, unleash that. that. Awesome. And last question, have you guys ever done Alice in Wonderland at Canisius, or is this going to be the first time? No, we have not. Um, oh, okay. We wanted to do something that a lot of people knew mm -hmm. for our first show, so then it would bring in a yeah. few more people, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And so far, we have a cast of about 20, 25 people, so I'd say that we awesome. we did a pretty good job with that. All right. Well, thank you so much for meeting with me, Connor. It's been a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Julia. All right. <laughs> so thank you so much, and back to the studio, guys. Welcome back. We're now going to turn it over to Zakia, who is going to tell us about this weekend's Java Jam. This past weekend's Java Jam so, event, so stay tuned. Hi, this is Mallory Hagen, Miss America 2013. I'm here to talk about a difficult subject, child sexual abuse. It's a crime that can impact anyone. I know because members of my own family were victims. It needs to stop now and the only way it ends is to talk about it. I'm proud to partner with Brooklyn District Attorney Charles J. Hines to raise awareness for this issue. District Attorney Hines was the first in the nation to create a Crimes Against Children Bureau. Their staff of attorneys and counselors are dedicated to prosecuting those who prey on the most innocent victims. Please don't stay silent. If you know a child who is in immediate danger, please call 911. If you suspect a child is being abused or neglected, please call the State Central Register at 1-800-342-3720. Join me and District Attorney Hines fight to end child sexual abuse. 
Welcome back. Now we're going to turn it over to Zakia, who is going to tell us all about this past weekend's Java Jam. Take a look. Hi, I'm Kia Gale, and I'm here to give you the scoop about the Java Jam here at Canisius College. Hi, how are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm good, um, what's your name? Tatiana Cruz, um, and I'm a weekend programmer for the student program. So you put together this whole Java Jam? I did. I did. Wow, that took a lot of effort. <laughs> um, so, being the event coordinator, how did you get this Java Jam here? Okay, well, Java Jam is something Canisius used to do a few years ago, my freshman and sophomore year, actually. Um, and it wasn't a big hit then, and I think the reason is because they weren't using Canisius people, and there's a lot of talent on campus. So, like, touching into that uh, that talent and bringing them, I don't know, in front of people like to watch their friends play, and I think that's why it, like, is good and, like, works out so well. Yeah, and I definitely think this is a good thing. It brings a big crowd, and yeah. you guys have, what kind of food do you guys have today? Well, we have donuts, we have coffee, and we have a uh, hot cocoa. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Where's that from? We all got it from Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons. Who doesn't love Tim That's Hortons true. on campus? So I just want to say thank you for yeah. your time, and it was great talking to Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank you. Now we are going to take a quick commercial break, but stay tuned because when we come back, we'll be taking a look at some upcoming events happening at campus.
Welcome back to Canisius Connection. Now we are going to take a look at some upcoming events that are happening here on campus. We just recently received word that the well-known comedian Bo Burnham will be visiting and performing at Canisius College. Join us in Montante Cultural Center on November 1st at 8 p.m. for some great laughs. Ticket sales start on Wednesday, October 15th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the dining hall. Be sure to attend the Canisius Homecoming Weekend this Thursday for a weekend of fun. Join classmates, parents, friends, alumni, and family for several events, gatherings, and celebrations. Presentations include the Canisius Video Institute, the Golden Griffin Fund Presentation, Sports Administra Administration Career Panel, and CPD Mentoring Workshop. A full schedule and link to registration is on the My Canisius webpage. The annual Fall Canisius Community Day will take place this Saturday, September 27th, from 8.30 a.m. until 11.30 a.m. This will be followed by lunch at the Fall Fast Food Trucks. Be sure to get involved with Community Day at Canisius and help serve others. There will be another opportunity to get involved in the spring. That's all we have for you today, so make sure to check us out on Facebook and YouTube. We air a new show on Channel 19 every Tuesday at 3 p.m. From all of us here at Canisius Connection, have a great week, Canisius.